very, very good motivated uh, employees who are willing to serve. But when you're in an acting position, you feel that, you know, you're, you're actually probably looking for other jobs, not sure whether this is sustainable. Um, you're more focused on whether I'm going to get confirmed or not than in your performance. What, uh, what I feel is in the private sector, maximum of three, two to six, three, three to six months of acting, one is confirmed. I think it is important that the public service also ensures that within six months of a, an employee having been employed and having done the, the period of acting, that they are confirmed to enable them to know whether they are going to be retained and um, their new terms, if uh, there are any amendments, and their, uh, their obligations. And that's when they sign their performance uh, uh, agreements. That will actually improve and enhance the services by the public service. When it comes to um, retirement, Madam Speaker, uh, we have a huge unemployment uh, problem in the country, but I think it's important that we also look at the figures. How many people do we have in the public service uh, every year that are due for retirement? And when we know that we have X number of people that are due for retirement, we also have to know that we have identified the people that will succeed them uh, in those positions and so mentorship comes in very handy when sometimes we talk about having a bloated uh, staffing in the public service uh, there's something that the private sector does that I think the public sector could also do which is giving people golden handshakes and uh, early retirements so that they can go out there and then you can be able to sustain and maintain uh, the level of employees within the budget but uh, Retirement can be a very painful exercise for a number of people. And I think it is, uh, it is mandatory for government to also look at how we will plan retirements for the people in, in, the pub, in the public service. They have served this country for many years. Some of them have done amazing good work. Of course, we know that there's also a crop that doesn't do good work, a crop that actually drives the institutions down because of corruption. So training is also very, very important. Training for advancement in your career, training for succession planning, training for a retirement planning. I think that if we don't deal with the planning for what happens after 60 within government for the various employees who've served the institutions for very long, we will only see an increase in mental health because at 60 people are still vibrant and able and if that's the only thing they've done, they really need to be held and helped into into retirement because they are still useful citizens of our society. I also want to speak to the fact of pension. When somebody is going for retirement and then they struggle and struggle and struggle to get their pension, I think this is really an in inhuman uh, thing that we are doing to our various employees. There should be a way for one to immediately be able to access their pension. When we saw the Office of the Auditor General talk about people who are receiving pension that are not actually liable to receive pension, they are, uh, they are actually, it's all corruption, I think we need to really investigate that and protect the pension because the pension is the hard work of the various citizens who have served this country tirelessly. We also have a situation of ghost workers. I think while we're thinking about retiring people at 60, let's look at how many ghost workers do we have in the public service. We need to make sure that we have no ghost workers, we have no corruption when it comes to pension, we're efficient in uh, providing the pensions for those who are going, we're training and helping them be able to deal with retirement when it's due. We're also ensuring that we're training the generation that is coming in uh, government used to be, uh, you know, celebrated for the kind of training that it did for its employees. But we've seen a drop in that. And that's why you're seeing that there's also laxity when it comes to confirming people that are acting. And this could be another way to breed corruption because, you know what, if you want me to confirm you in an acting position, then you've got to pay a price. I think when we tie all these loopholes and make things mandatory, and that is why I commend the Honorable Member for bringing this, when it's mandatory, then we don't have all these loopholes where it's you scratch my back, I scratch yours, you know, you, you, you give me something and I'll make sure that you are confirmed. So I think um, I'll, I'll, I'll be bringing a question to ask really how many are the numbers of people that are due for retirement? Uh, are they still in the service? What was the reason for the extension? Uh, how many people um, 
uh, do we have that are in acting capacity and why are they still acting so we can see which public institutions are actually uh, not uh, adhering to to the law to ensure that they treat their employees humanely and um, as a society recently we discussed the need to respect our elders you know uh, a person who reaches 60 right is not somebody that is useless to the society they come with a lot of wisdoms and that's why we recently talked about uh, helping us recognize our wazers in the community and giving them something. So maybe there will be a room for us to ensure that you have advisors that can come in once in a while to interact with, with the various ministries they serve and be able to contribute. And I think public uh, participation does that, but they could have a platform because there is a lot of wisdom in, in experience and that is something that the young generation will not have immediately but they will acquire so all in all I support the amendments and I look forward to us as a country becoming more sensitive to how we treat our employees becoming more sensitive to how we reward and uh, celebrate those who have served in the interests of the public and dedicated their lives towards public service thank you I support Thank you very much. The Honorable Gonzi Rai, member for Kinango. Please try to trace our working mic. Okay, you may proceed on the one on the on your right. Asante sana bi speaker. Mimi pia nami ningetaka kutoa sauti yangu kuhusiana na hii hoja iliyoko mbele yetu. Bi speaker hii hoja imekuja kwa wakati mwafaka kwa sababu tunapozungumzia masuala haya ya kazi nafikiri ni muhimu tufahamu kwamba lengo kubwa hasa la, la hoja hii ni kutaka kuboresha morali za wafanyikazi katika hii public service commission kwa sababu ya ule ugadamizaji ambao uko hasa katika sekta hii bi speaker kumekuwa na hatari ambazo zimekuwa zikifanyika hasa watu wa ambao wako katika sehemu kame kama kule kwangu kinango mtu bi speaker penginepo mwalimu anaenda zake ama anaenda retirement na mwalimu anayemshikilia atapewa nafasi ile na ataka pale kwa mtu wa karibu miaka sita na unaona kwamba huyu mwalimu anatosha kuchukua hiyo nafasi lakini kwa sababu ya kutojua ni nani wa kunisaidia inakuwa ni kwamba akae mahali pale miaka sita na mwisho wake aje aletee mwalimu mwingine na yeye aendelee tu kuwa yeye anashikilia nafasi ya ukuwa naibu wa mwalimu mkuu hili ni jambo ambalo linavunja moyo sana kwa sababu wakati unapofanya kazi inahitajika tajiri awe anaelewa tabu zako na mashaka yako ili wakati wote awe anatosheka kile unachokifanya kwa sababu chote ni faida kwa serikali na ni muhimu yeye pia naye ajisikie kwamba yuko kazini na anafurahikia kazi yake Bi speaker tumekuwa na machifu na hasa tumekuwa na wafanyikazi ambao wako katika sehemu kame na utakuta kwamba kwa mfano kule Kinango walimu tunawapatia hardship allowance lakini machifu ambao wameajiriwa kule madisi walioko kule madio walioko kule hawapati hardship allowance ama wafanyikazi wengine wote hawapati hardship allowance na tukiuliza hii shida inatokana na nini bi speaker hakuna la mwenye isipokuwa ni kuzungushwa na ndio maana mara nyingi mkaguzi wa hisabu huja hapa mwaka nenda mwaka rudi akituletea kwamba Watu mtu anaenda retire na baada ya kwenda retire anashikiliwa lakini mtu yule haondoki katika orodha ya wafanyikazi na ndio maana huwa yatakikana yule mwenye kumshikilia akae pale kama miaka kumi tisa ili watu waendelee kupokea pesa za yule ambaye ameenda retire na la kustajabisha zaidi ni kwamba hata wakati mwingine machifu kama wanakwenda kustaafu wanapiona notice ya mapema kwamba muda fulani unaenda likizo ukisubiri retire lakini hayo yatafanyika na baada ya kumaliza 
likizo yake na kwanza kustafu kwake malipo yake yanachukua karibu miaka sita miaka mini hata wengine wanakufa kabla kupata pesa zao kuna na utaratibu maalum wa kujua kwamba kama ni mwalimu kama ni chief ama mfanyikazi yote mwingine anapokwenda kustaf kuwe na mipango mahsus ya kujua kwamba baada ya miezi sita ama miezi mitatu mtu yule anapata haki yake maana watu wengi tunawaua sisi na ni jambo la kusikitisha kwa sababu kama hilo tunaweza kukosa kuliwa, kuwa na mipango nalo na mara kwa mara tunasikia kwamba wizara hii ina wafanyakazi gush wengi na wote wanalipwa mishahara lakini aliyefanya kazi kwa kujitolea katika nchi hii anabaki akisubiri malipo yake ya uzeni na hawezi kupata. Bi speaker ni jambo ambalo lingehitaji